So I guess the first agenda item is the approval of minutes, which look fine to me. Yeah, ditto. Yep, agreed. Do I have a motion or? Second. <laughs> okay. I'll move if you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> minutes, oh, well, okay. all in favor. Aye. 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 Yep. Minutes are approved. And then we have the CPA funding applications. There were four on time and one that wasn't. Um, did everybody get copies? Yeah, I, one, two, three, yeah. four, five, five, yep. Yeah. And I don't know, take them in order of Amy's attachment, which you didn't have, but um, to start with the Quanquat one. Sure. Um, which is for $48,700 for historic preservation money for restoration of their silo, which is a tile silo and quite rare, mm. evidently. There weren't very many of those. So I, are there questions or? Is it because this, this, it's under some specialty it, it can apply for the CPA? It's like a historic are, site, right? Yes, it's, it's like the, the Historical Commission has approved it as a, what a worthy property and weightly deserving of being considered yeah. approved true. the application. So the Historical Commission um, in November uh, looked at a uh, just slightly earlier version, a draft version of this application. And we went through, remember that when we received the church applications, we developed a new set of criteria for applications from private entities. So we took the Quant Quant application through that series of um, criteria and agreed that it is eligible. Um, it has its, it's cited on the state register of culturally significant assets. Um, the town named it as important in the open space and recreation plan last year. And as Judy said, it is, um, it is a very unusual structure. And that was one of our criteria. Remember that it be distinctive, not just another federal house with a slate roof. <laughs> um, and Actually, the only thing I that yes. I saw, we saw missing, Judy, that we, we, the Historical Commission, asked for is that although we believe that, that the uh, method that Quan Quant proposes to use and has already used on another silo is consistent with the Secretary of the Interior's standards for historic preservation, um, I didn't see that this final proposal says that explicitly. Um, no, I don't. There's think a little so. asterisk. Yeah, I'm sure. Where was it? Uh, you did see something, Andrew. Yeah, it says it under. It was like under the the third page. It says like under the totals. It says repairs and restorations to conform with the interior standards for masonry uh -huh. repair. You're a better reader than I. Then <laughs> this is why I need to print things. Oh, I just always print everything so I can read. Yeah, these. there it is. Right. The um, okay. The so. So the minute taker will not put that in the minutes since it was irrelevant. Um, uh, and I've just admitted Jonathan. Welcome, Jonathan. We're discussing the Quant Quant application. Okay. All right. Um, I think the application goes through the is organized in terms of the criteria that the historical commission had established. So in terms of historical significance, demonstrable public good and uh, commitment to preservation. So straightforward in a project. Are there any should would we like to have have someone from Quant Quant come and talk to us about this? Yeah, I, I would again because I I struggle with 
Well, yeah, I, I, I guess I would. I'm, I'm, uh, I think it's a, a, a great project, but Quan Quan is not lacking for money. Well, Jonathan, what information, that has not been a criterion for any fundraise, any proposal we've received. No, but we always we just want to be careful about adding a new criterion. I, I, well, it, it hasn't been stated, but we always talk about what money people could 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 come up with as a as a supplement. We did that with. Well, they have them. they have contributed. They did eighty thousand on their own in the first, and and they're proposing six thousand here as part of it. Okay, all right. I mean, it, it's up to you guys. You guys are closer to it than I am, but. I think we should always have, have conversations with, with, with people who are we're going to give money to, but that's that's just me. Well, we I think we always do, actually, don't we? Uh, I would, so the, the, the question was just posed: Should we? So I'm just saying we should. Okay. Well, I won't be surprised if there isn't a discussion or someone at town meeting brings it up because of the optics of it being a successful business that's potentially receiving money. I. I expect mm -hmm. that to be a, an issue at sure. town meeting. So this is one of the ones we have, like you said, with a private entity. So this is sort of new territory for us too. So yeah, we have to sort yeah. of explain ourselves on that one. Yeah. And we don't necessarily need to fund the whole amount either. Correct. The whole amount requested. We've done that before. Just as after we took Kestrel Land Trust through, Andrew probably remembers how many <laughs> six or eight rounds of yeah, something like that. questioning we funded about two thirds of what they had requested mm -hmm. um, in the long run. Yeah. Um, this reminds me, and I'm sorry, I should have said this at the beginning that since I think Judy and I were the only members of the CPC at the special town meeting that approved the grant to the church two weeks ago, which of course is the first grant the town has made for historic preservation purposes to a private entity. Um, that the only question we received had to do with the eligibility of a religious um, structure or to a religious organization. So I, I think it was very good advice that we had gotten from Stuart Sagner that we went through all those processes and had town council look at the application to make sure that it was eligible. And I, I don't, and the person who asked who I don't know seemed quite uh, satisfied with that response. But voted against the project. Did she always do her homework? Yeah. She, I mean, she was sitting behind me, so I didn't see. Well, then it was nearly unanimous. But. You know, you know, to 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 Andrew's point, or maybe it's, maybe it was Kate's. I, I I forget which. Um, it's it's no different than if if that I don't think they ever have before. If the Waitley Inn came to us looking for help, had look had come to us looking for help to um redo the outside of, of, of their building because there's no question that's a historic building in town and 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 is perhaps one of the signature pieces in town if they come to us looking for historic preservation money for that you know the Waitley Inn is a, is a pretty successful business and they're good community partners you know as is Quan Quan um I I just think we need to be careful about about this because it, numbers are are that you know in terms of success it is somewhat subjective, but it is also somewhat objective. Well, the numbers are objective. The the measure of success is subjective. So I, I don't know. I, ju I just think we should be careful about it because I think it will come up. Jonathan, I think you're, I mean, no discussion has taken place yet within this group. So I think, of, co of course, <laughs> of course, what you just said. And, and the Historical Commission's job was to verify that the application is eligible since the historic preservation guidelines for CPA funding are so specific. And that is what we have done. Okay. I'm not doubting the, the work. It's great work that the, the, the commission's done. I just am, am okay. Okay. Well, I gather there are no other questions about the proposal at the moment. So we'll ask, we'll see that somebody from Quan Quan comes to the next meeting. Um, the library renovation. They're looking for $7,500 for 
mason re repairs. Um, this is in a national registry district. Uh, the building is old enough and significant enough. So it is eligible. Um, they haven't been to the historical commission yet. Does anybody have any questions? Um, and, and Bob Smith is coming to the historical commission meeting next Monday to talk about the proposal. Um, one of the things that this made me uh, think about and um, along with the, uh, the recreation commission's application is that the town has a capital planning process with a multi-year schedule of projects that have been discussed. Um, and it and projects are named out, you know, for the next probably three years or so. It's not complete because they haven't done the latest review, but I looked at the uh, schedule from last February and the library has nothing on it. Um, and it made me wonder, this is not actually about the library proposal, it's, uh, whether when we get a proposal for capital project from the library, what our process is for making sure that the town, that other, the appropriate town um, entities have reviewed it and agree with the plan. Yeah, because if it's under historic preservation, they should, the historical commission should look at, yeah, as a, the board that's been, whatever check mark has been under the board that has, should they review it before it comes to our meetings, right? I think that's the key, right? As you're saying. No, I mean that oh. that I agree with, but whether since we have a well-established capital planning process and a committee that looks every year, whether we ought to just make sure that we're not um, working with folks who have not taken their project through that. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, there's like another, yeah, there's another source. I get you what you mean, yeah. It's, it hasn't, I don't remember it coming up mm -hmm. before because I think everything you've seen has been, you know, built into that process, that review process separately. Because they've finished all the renovations, right, if I remember? Well, the, I think so. Yeah. All, with, well, except for what was voted at special town meeting was two thousand dollars to finish something off yep you think the library is sort of a funny it's, because they it's have their own team. funds in addition to independent yeah. yeah so they're and i this looks to me like something that is coming from the trustees rather than the town but no it's a very good question donna yeah I wonder if it isn't worth sort of thinking about building in either a meeting that includes Brian or a representative from the capital planning committee sort of, or, or inviting him to this meeting, it, you know, going forward to, to sort of be with us to vet out whether or not there are any issues like, oh, they haven't been to the capital. I mean, you're right that the library, it's kind of different because they've got the trustees and they've got some public funds, but um, yeah, I, I mean, it's, I think that's worth thinking about. I was struck that the, the estimate is a bit vague. Well, I shouldn't say vague, but Right. If if the it seems to be they picked the number and are requesting that the work be done to fit within the number rather than the other way around. And I, that's what it says. That surprised mm -hmm. me too, especially in this market of inflation. Um, and I was also surprised. This is more of an historical commission comment since I had sent Bob. You no. Know, all the information about what you have to do to apply for a star preservation funding, which they actually know because we'd sent them all the same thing, their, their, uh, their application for the lift for the handicapped accessibility project had to be redone. Um, we'll have to ask them and, and we can do this in the historical commission also to, 
they'll have to verify that whatever they're planning to do is consistent with the Secretary of the Interior standards mm -hmm. for restoration. Um, I personally would feel better if they had outlined what needs to be done and given us a very thorough review of that. I think we need that anyway. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, we need to talk to some to Bob Smith. Maybe if he's coming to the historical commission, maybe that's a way to. I'm, I'm a little bit of a loss about how you coordinate with the capital planning committee, and that's the wrong name for the committee. But no, that is the name of the committee. It might be a subcommittee, but it's a, that's no, that's it's, the name. Okay. it's a committee. Yeah. Um, well, I like I like Catherine's idea of asking Brian his advice about how he thinks we should be just making sure that we're getting projects that have been properly vetted all the way around and including asking about the library status and whether it is different from other. Okay. Well, I can take I can take that on. You know, it, it, it reminds me, though, and it's it, it obviously relates to the to the rec committee request as well. But I can remember when we, and I don't remember the, 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 the personalities in the conversation, but when we did a small project putting the fence up at the um, Christian Lane small diamond next to the fire station, um, the, the question was, and, and, and we, we actually went right to uh, capital planning. And we got we got the money from capital planning, and someone asked why we didn't go to CPC instead because it was eligible. And, and so I, I think these guidelines are important because I, I I remember it was the exact opposite of the conversation we're having here. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're consistent with with whatever whatever we say and and because it, it, it was and, and again i don't remember the whole thing but i was just like well because it it's what we, we we decided to do so yeah consistency is important i i think um jonathan that until the recreation commission uh, appointed you as the representative which you know and i don't think that spot had been filled until that point, although it was named, you know, it's named in the CPC, I think there wasn't sort of a communications loop in place. As we Maybe, I, I don't know. I just, I, I just, because it, it, it struck me that the, that this group thought that they that they would be a logical funder of a project like that, rather than going for going, rather than competing with other important funds that the that the um, capital planning committee might have to you know weigh um so i again if if we ask people to go to capital planning first, rather than here they're adding to the competition with people who may not be able to apply for cpc money so i i think it sort of makes sense that if you if you can look for a bucket that does not compete with with requests that can't meet our qualifications, then that may be a good thing. Um, there's only so much money. There's only so much capital planning money to go around. Well, I don't think they're mutually exclusive. Uh, for example, the libraries, um, the accessibility project was on the capital planning schedule with a note that read CPA eligible. So right. just the way there are notes on, there were notes on some projects last year that said ARPA eligible. And, and what was interesting to me about the, sorry, we're getting into the recreation proposal, but it's pertinent to what Jonathan just said. When I went to look at the capital uh, planning uh, schedule, again, from last spring, there's an entry from the recreation for something about batting cages. It's about $12,000. And the note said says in the margin, CPA eligible, but we haven't gotten a proposal for that. 
So right. there's a there's a just there's a missing link there someplace. Yeah, I, and, and, and again, I, mean, I, I think I, Brian's looking. I think the committee, Jonathan, is looking at all the capital work that the that might happen, and then thinking about different sources that might be available. Are you are you okay. suggesting that the capital planning committee help us prioritize projects, Donna? No, no, I, I'm I'm. I'm just wanting to be sure that when a proposal comes from a, a discrete part of the town, when we're talking about a municipal project, that some group other than a small group of volunteers has endorsed it as a good project for the town. <laughs> you know? well, okay, well, I'll talk I to Brian and get his viewpoint. Because those are different lenses. So there are some going to be some people who say that's not a good project for the town, but then we might turn around and say, well, it is a good project for the town. So, you know, and 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 just like in anything, and and, and again, my, my point is is those those monies that do not potentially have overlap. You know, if if capital planning funds a a, a thirty thousand dollar request, whatever, um, that could have gone to us um it's now in competition for a a, 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 a cruiser or a fire you know it, it, it I, think, I just think we should be trying to avoid competition yeah i think what don is looking for is endorsement not funding yeah. okay. i used the word vetting before yeah. that's probably the right word but i don't know if it's, it makes sense or not um, we would, as you say, we would have different criteria, so. But of course, we can't originate any proposals. They have to come from another source. Yeah. yeah. I think that's true for capital planning as well. They don't originate things. They get requests. You know, those requests are sent out uh, at the beginning of budget season. And right. and people can put in requests or, or not. Um, you know, and I, and I know having sat on capital planning for a long time, um, there are there are some people on capital planning that would argue that the capital planning's job is not to make a decision on the the adequacy or the 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 the, the, the capital planning committee's job is to evaluate affordability. It's not to evaluate um, whether the purpose is a good purpose on behalf of the town now there are others that, that would disagree with that statement but i know there are some people who would say no i i have no interest in evaluating whether a project is 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 in the best interest of the town i'm just here to tell you whether i think that the project is affordable or not so there are some who won't want to be asked to make that value judgment on a project other than the 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 the, the financial capacity Well, I think I'll talk to Brian and we'll presumably know more after the historical commission meeting as well. Anything else on this application? I wonder, sorry, I wonder if we don't ask them to, to I don't mean to completely redo the application, but ask them to be a little bit more specific based on what you were inferring about were they maybe did they decide 7500 is what they should ask for and backfill like should we ask them to you know to sort of diplomatically almost to try again with yeah i hate to well, send I, them I all think the way they, back what to they could do is a better job of explaining the work to be done why yeah. do they think it's necessary before um, they even come to us we could get better informed i would Thing yeah, in writing I, I, instead should, of having right. Yeah. I mean, that would be a suggestion I have. I guess we would just add like an, addendum, like an addendum, like something like some drawings or something. What work could be done? Yeah, just like an addendum to the uh, to the proposal. The yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, I'll communicate that to Bob Smith. Yeah. 
Milan, um, Frontier Tennis Courts. Can you remind me if it was the tennis courts or the track that we voted a few years yeah. ago? It was that was the track. It was the court. It, it says 2014. It said 2014. We voted. Well, yeah. there, it was the track that never got done. I think, yeah. Or that they Thank never. You. That's yeah. the one you're thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I seem to recall. You're you're right, Judy. But but I seem to recall as part of that conversation, um, because the tennis courts and the track and and a variety of other things were part of the bond bill that Frontier was putting forth, and yeah. um and the conversation in Waitley revolved around that um those items such as the track and the tennis courts were put into this in, in into this column um could be pay our portion could be paid for through cpc as opposed to um the 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 other methodologies it, it, it's it's so interestingly it's kind of like the conversation we've just had with the other two proposals that it's which bucket do you pull from? But but the tennis courts were certainly part of that needs assessment by Frontier in terms of their their facilities. It was also too because it's four towns. We didn't know if our portion could be divided up into some of the other towns putting in a equal or more appropriate you know portion of that. I think I remember we had a that issue you know because it is a four town you know a school for all four towns. If their CPAs could fund some of the project as well. Yeah, well, we, we did fund it conditional on their funding. Right. Yeah, yeah. that was the did, only part I remember. Like, is that we we voted um, to support uh, funding for track improvement that was going to be paid out over a number of years, as I recall. Yeah, yeah. because it was a bond. It was yeah. 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 Right. They never yeah. did it. Right. Yeah. Wanted to draw on the money. So, um, the the only question that I had about this. Um, which Brian can answer probably in you know two minutes if he when he meets with us about this is um, the rationale for eleven out of three hundred thousand. I mean, I understand yeah. three hundred thousand is for all four towns, and that our share is going to be a small share. But I'm just I'm just curious. Well, well it sounds the, like what's the back of the, back of the bar napkin math on that? Um, if the well, we shouldn't have to happen. guess. No, we should just be told. <laughs> yeah, but but just three hundred. I mean, eleven thousand is well. Anyway, I, yeah, yeah. That, that's just our it's, our our percentage based percent. upon the formula. It's three percent. Eleven thousand out of three hundred is three percent. Oh yeah, so smaller than our percentage of the formula. Well, he's he's listed the other funding sources, um, which include E and D. Right. It's just it's too small here. And these school, school choice funds and other other towns CPCs. So evidently, this isn't the whole portion of Waitley's contribution. Right. And, and I don't know who would make that decision in terms of, of of how else Waitley would fund it. I guess the select board would. Well, he's obviously got a rationale, so we'll find yeah. out. It's funny. Somebody from Weston asked me the other day whether we were battling pickleball court requests on the planning board here in Waitley, and I said no. We must be having a lot of that in Weston. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I know some people who are, you know, pickleball uh, rackets are on their Christmas list, so. It will come. Absolutely, it will. I mean, if you think about it, there's a, you know, it'll go to Deerfield Academy first because, you know, they've got the only, um, I think they've got the only uh, paddle court uh, in the area. And unless, if it still exists. And um, my guess is they'll get pickleball too. Uh -huh. I think the Recreation Commission is going to have a different age group to fund here. Oh, oh no, I meant Deerfield Academy. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. Okay, can we move? Should we move on to the early heat irrigation project? Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Which to me raises more questions than answers, but. Um, Jonathan, did the Recreation Commission discuss this? Yeah. 
I, I am surprised by it because when you brought us a proposal that we all that we funded a couple of years ago, not the ice rink, but I'm sorry, there's something about the ball fields, yeah. and you brought us a very thorough proposal. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had some questions and then needed some engineering work, and I think we actually used CPC administrative money to pay for. So I'm surprised. I'm surprised by this. Um, I, I can say that we discussed it. I was not part of the creation of the the actual the physical creation of this application. Um, it is sanctioned by the commission as a huge need. Um, but I will, Donna, you'll you'll forgive me, but I'm going to remain silent on the the. Um, presentation of the application. Can you can you outline the project? Because I can't really tell. Yeah. Very vague. What, and, and what, the, what the money that's requested covers and what it doesn't. There's some mention of drilling a well, but it looks like that's not. I, it, it is as it's What does this cover? Yeah, it's it, it, there's it, it's it's the irrigation um, of water to the three fields. Because obviously, you know, our, our past summer just killed those fields, uh, and it's costing a tremendous amount of money in terms of reseeding and all that. Because we, you know, no one ever forecast um, the type of drought we had uh, this past summer. Um, uh, and the so the need to make sure that we can water. Um, the fields is 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 critical, um, and the irrigation, depending upon upon how final budgets come out, would either come from um, the river um, through piping, obviously, in terms of the the, the pumping, um, or we would do a well. My my effort is that we try to do it from the river, um, and then just then it goes into the to the irrigation pipes. Um, but the, the downside of that is whether that is a long-term solution because the commission may not always have the, the talent and the know-how to do that type of, that type of pumping from a river, um, et, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and is it easier to, to, to tap into something that already exists? So you just turn on a. On a, on a hose or not a hose, but a, a, a switch. Um, Are there any drawings of the proposed lay? Not that I know of, no, but, but we can certainly- Any see. list of equipment? It doesn't sound like they're ready to, to, well, it, to it, request it, it, money. It's largely, it, it's largely the, the, the um, what do you call the things when you when you when you dig a hole and it, it's the trenching, um, and the, the 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 piping and the connections. Um, to, to but the question is whether we go the route of just tapping into the river or not, and and that's the unknown in terms of what equipment. Is needed. But certainly piping, et cetera, would would be needed. Um, you know, I my my hope is that you guys will accept this and then um, the specifics that you request can be added uh, as as the time goes by so that we get a, a yes um, that's that's not where problem. would the rest of the money come from I don't know the answer to that Judy uh, has has anybody, an sorry Judy I was wondering if anybody's gone to the Conservation Commission about this being a major earth moving project in a floodplain it, it is no it is it is not because the the major earth moving project was the creation of, of the fields to begin with and the floodplain is actually only from the drawings that i i'm recalling uh when the softball field was was developed the the floodplain and and the and the area of concern for CPC and with DEP was a strip 
along the softball field, but less so at the at the baseball field at either of the baseball fields. Um, my memory on on that those maps may may be somewhat lost. Well, but we I'm, can check. Yeah, we can check the maps, but um, I have a obviously okay. we, we passed all those all those hurdles when we did the softball. Field. I think I think the reason I ask is that I think there's a high probability that the floodplain bylaw will be. Um, passed it or requested to be passed at town meeting. To so this project would then be subject to that. And then Concom, mm -hmm. if you're tapping into the river, and I was trying to think, have you heard anything else, Jonathan, on the other project when the redevelopment there? I know they were going to do some road work and fence work. Have you heard anything back on that project? The only thing that I've heard on that project is that um, the bids came in quite high. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure they're going to be able to do everything that they were looking to do. I, I, I think there won't be as, as significant bathroom work yep. as had been originally planned and that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I was just um, thinking there was a lot of, like, I remember who I was looking at because I was on the Concom, a lot of fence work and building up, of, like you said, on that bank to let it go to sea. Just, if you're going to have access to the river, I didn't know if those two, you know, parts would uh, conflict on each other. Yeah, and and, I, and again, that, that engineering, Andrew, is, is the last thing in the world that I would, mm -hmm. that I would speak to. Um, um, Jonathan, that was actually the question I was about to ask. Has the civil engineer been engaged to look at the project? Well, the 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 only thing that, well, in terms of the river, no. But but again, getting back to the comment about the, the earth moving, it's it's literally a a, a, a trench that's you know a, a, a foot you know not even a foot wide and and not very deep because it's just a, a two inch pipe. That gets placed into the ground that doesn't go very deep and, and does not require a lot of a lot of width. So we're not moving any any. Okay. Yeah, just minimal disturbance. Yeah. Well, a comment about drilling is that. Well, if the will if if the well if if we go forward with the well concept, there there would be dr drilling, um, and I'm not even sure where they would need a, a well expert to tell them where that where that drill uh, would 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 take place. And again, it's why. Personally, I would prefer to to, to to tap into the river. I heard yeah, um, yeah, recently, if there's anything doing with wells, you do not want you're gonna fork over a lot of money for anything right. with wells. Right. And it's just a lot less expensive, a lot more cost efficient um, to tap in, into into the river. Mm -hmm. That would that would require a little bit more equipment because you would need a pump and all those kinds of things. But with a well, you need a pump as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, if uh, I mean I don't know, maybe we're drifting as someone who pumps out of the river daily in the summertime um you you if, if you don't have an existing landing there there's a tremendous number of hoops to jump through in order to put one in and you'll you're you're talking about a lot of lift you're going to need a very specific and and a very expensive pump to lift the water from from the river especially when the river's low and it's dry out um right. that meaningful amount of water to work with yeah, and doug when you say hoops do you mean compliance hoops or just execution of the project hoops well com compliance hoops yeah. that's what i thought you meant it's a riverway so it's probably army corps and that's almost federal yeah yeah, yeah. a lot of lot I of think paperwork it's, yeah it's army corps it's army corps for sure yeah and and Doug, you received Army Corps permission, as did as do all the all the farmers who tap into the river. They all receive Army Corps permission to to tap into the river. Well, um, I know for new new installation of what we call an irrigation landing, which is basically where you put the pump. Uh, yes, but uh, fortunately, the land that we farm on the river, which is about fifty five acres there were existing landings and you know to to maintain an existing landing is you know a piece of cake um it's also possible there's an existing landing there that may be overgrown and could be you know or exposed um and reused um a lot of landings went in in the 60s um and there could have been one there too when it was most likely active active farmland hey doug by help me because again i know nothing about engineering i know nothing about farming um when you say landing define landing for me 
Um, it's it's an accessible sort of flat spot. Okay. Where you where you can locate a pump and and reasonably access it. Um, I assume that it would be a pump that would be removed seasonally. Maybe it wouldn't. Um, but you do unless you're going to have an electric pump, which would be a huge amount of electricity. You're going to be you're going to need to get fuel down there. Um, so you need you need accessibility for a truck to someone to haul fuel down there or or in you know install and fill a propane tank or something like that. You'd, you'd certainly need you'd certainly also need to be able to remove the pump in case of you know, a flood event. Um, yeah. And, so I, and, don't, and, I don't think, I don't think you're talking about a permanent installation. No. And these are issues that, that, that certainly Wayne can address better than I, uh, as, as the chair of the rec commission. Um, and with someone obviously with pretty extensive irrigation uh, and, and pumping experience. Um, so can I suggest that at our next meeting, um we can get some of these answers but we can also have wayne come to the to the meeting to answer some of the some of these technical technical issues that i i certainly cannot answer and never will be able to that makes sense jonathan um i i um would also hope that we can get some drawings i mean those are those are in the requirements that are printed on the application and we haven't and it's not here. <laughs> I'm a little concerned. It doesn't feel like there's a decision about exactly what the project is going to be yet. They're so different yeah. and, and whether or not that can really be sorted. I don't think we can approve something without that decision. Well, but but we're not asking for approval tonight, Kate. We're just right. But can do you really think that when we vote by can March, have that you can be, if, if you're there's per, you're going to have to do other permission, like get get permission to proceed. I, I just I see that being a big hurdle in the next three to four months. Well, and, and if it becomes a hurdle, if it becomes a barrier, then then of course it would it would be pulled. But you know, you have there there is time to 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 do the work that is needed, and if it can't get done, it can't get done. Yeah, I think you know, I think that's the important and the important thing for you to communicate. Right. Unless the students want to communicate to Wayne that we we simply wouldn't be able to approve a grant for it to do A or B. <laughs> it has I, to, I wouldn't, to be I wouldn't, Donna, I wouldn't vote yes. Well, I, I mean, if it were my money, I might vote yes, but it's not, you know, it's it's just a it's a no. state program and it has limitations and what can be done with it no pre presentation and and specificity needs to be improved on this um that is the message that i'm going to going to bring back um, the other thing you might consider is that cpa uh administrative expense money can be used for studies to evaluate projects and prepare plans and things so it, it might make sense to to think about hiring an engineer or somebody to to analyze yeah, yeah, some of these subjects. That doesn't ask, have to go through town meeting. Yeah, let me ask Wayne about how how much detail is in his head as opposed to on this application, um, because the if we were to have another summer like we had this past summer. Um, just probably, you know, those 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 fields are are, you know, we're going to have bigger issues. Mm -hmm. Well, the chances well, yeah, are this isn't going to be voted till the end of May anyway. I mean, it, you're not. I, I I get that. And then it has to go out to bid. Yeah, I know. And well, you can't start until July first anyway. I, I I get all that. I get all that. But the but the drought. Well, you can case, start before. You can July start before for July first. Can. Yeah. Sure. It's a special article. Let me let me. Let me go back to those guys and ask for more specificity. But, um, you know, it has to go out to bid. It has to. I know. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, some towns bid ready documents could be required at the phase of, you know, by town meeting. That seems. Well, 
again, it depends upon the detail of the bid. Yeah. I, I'm not sure that I'm not sure that any of us have a finger on the pulse of of, of the level of engineering that is necessary at this point. Um, so let's let's get answers before we start to 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 pull it apart to to its detriment. Well, okay, I mean, that, and that's the reason we're having this discussion, right? Is to try to get the application right. to a point where it could pass muster. Right. I exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. And you will communicate to Wayne. I will communicate to Wayne and Chris. Thank you. The snowmobile one did not make the deadline. Um, Does this cover under recreation? It's Sort of that gray area too. I know because they did. They wanted. I'm trying to remember the last project they came for us. They wanted some room maintenance. We denied it because it wasn't under the rules. Does this follow Judy too? Because it's I, drainage or it's not the it's not the topic. It's I'm not sure it's eligible. I guess so. that's my yeah. Because that's I was like it's that gray area. It's like if they're yeah. just signage. I'm like that's sort it, of like. It would have to be a capital improvement, and sometimes mm. signs don't seem to me to be a capital improvement. But yeah, I, 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 I um, they they did a nice job with their application, and it sounds like a great thing that yeah we should help them do if we can, um, in my view. But I I went to read the guidelines for recreation, and they're not they're not terribly specific. Um, well, I've got them. Here, you maybe you, you may have read something that I couldn't find at 445. <laughs> well, if, if you look at the matrix for just the matrix with check marks, yes, no, mm -hmm. the, the basic categories are for recreation you can acquire land, you can create a project, a park, a trail, mm -hmm. you can preserve, you can't support. And then you can rehabilitate or restore. Yeah. And it doesn't fit in any of those. Um, then in the paragraph that the community preservation group had on its on its uh, website, it said CPA funds may be used for the acquisition of land to be used for recreation or for the creation of new recreational facilities on land a community already owns. A 2012 amendment to the CPA broadened the law to also allow for the rehabilitation of existing outdoor recreational facilities. The amendment made it clear that with respect to, recre respect to land for recreational use, rehabilitation could include the replacement of playground equipment and other capital improvements to the land or the facilities they're on to make them more functional for their intended recreational use. Um, I don't it sounds think like it has to be something existing already on the land, yeah. Yeah, or, or some, you know, a physical improvement that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, to get capital improvement is something you could depreciate if you were a private company. And let me ask you this, if, there are there are obviously pockets of the snowmobile trail, and I just know because I, I walk on them occasionally, um, that clearly need brush removal and, and 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 clearing on a on a somewhat regular basis. I would imagine. I know that they come through my property every year to to to, to clean things out because of overgrowth, et cetera. Would that be considered rehabilitation, or is that just ongoing maintenance? That's I think that's ongoing maintenance. maintenance. Yeah, we clarify that as maintenance. Replacement of bridge, yeah. something like that. Right. Or or, or if, maybe yeah. replacing a a bank that eroded in a flood or something. That that seems to me. And they or, replace the bridge going through my property every couple of three years, probably. Um, I'm just wondering what did our money, did the town money for Kestrel in terms of the trail how did that fit into rehabilitation and not maintenance it's open space it's first of all it's an open space mm -hmm. grant it's not a recreation grant but and then it would just be an open space and, grant and, I guess and our question. money was for the acquisition towards the acquisition of the property of the kestrel property. kestrel paid for the boardwalk that's in there and all the signage and 
they didn't pay for any of that. Okay. I think it was a written or a verbal agreement that they could yeah. still access the land. It wasn't, yeah. Right. But we didn't we didn't pay for the 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 improve the land improvements. Okay. No. no. Just the acquisition. No, I mean there was some above the and and those were new bridges. Those were things that would have been eligible, I think, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. They, the, the, and actually, a lot of the work to install the stuff at uh, the woods was done by volunteers, including a lot of folks in Waitley who had said we we're available to be volunteers. So, yeah. But, um, but maybe the bridge replacement. The Smaller Blow maybe. Club does tons of volunteer work. It's a separate issue. Maybe bridge replacement does fit into that, though. In, well, of course, in, it does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we've been trying to get them to yeah. do bridge replacement to apply for funds for bridge replacement. For, yeah. yeah. So, or if, or if the Mill River, you know, if the path of the Mill River changed, which it does from time to time, like the Oxbow behind Shipper Blesky's property, yeah. you know, and it cut over one of their paths, that would be eligible. But the little right, signs, the, the bridge on the forest and game land has been out for years and and that would cost a fortune to be replaced because because it's state land and they demand full engineering and safety and but you know it would be eligible right i i've heard the bridge that that again in, in on our property that they replace every few years and that's not more than a 10 foot long maybe maybe 15 probably 15 feet to 20 feet, I guess. Um, that's seven to ten thousand dollars, just that. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's eligible, but they didn't yeah. ask for that. Right, right which so. is odd. Yeah. Okay. And we would pay for engineering studies for some of these things too, if it's a more elaborate that's thing. That's what the Ministry of Funds, yeah. Well, there's also Jonathan, I'm forgetting the name of it, but when in those brief, the brief period when the open space temporary committee was having conversations with uh, Pete Westover about trails. Mm -hmm. I remember that there that we heard about a state program for trail installation. And I think these guys could be going to that. I've just it's an acronym, of course, and now I've forgotten the acronym. Right. Um, right. Yeah. I, I mean I, I I've said all along that they should combine with people who want to do who want, who want to be cross country skiing and, and combine it into just permanent trails for a variety of different. Yeah. But that's not for me to decide. One complication here is that the the trails are all on, mostly on private land, so you you have to get it wasn't entirely clear to us whether if it's a trail, you know, like a bridge, whether say on your land, Jonathan, whether you needed to apply or you need to apply in conjunction with a snowmobile club or what, because mm -hmm. I mean, at least certainly you would need to approve. Right, but, and, uh, and you know, they'd knock on our door and we used to have a two minute conversation and say, of course you can. And yeah. then that's the extent of our involvement. Well, I, that's the think, only involvement we want. I think it would have to be a little more formal than that for CPA funds. <laughs> Well, do you think we need to check with Stuart Sagenor about this since they missed the deadline anyway? Um, well, we've already heard from Alan that he reached out last month, I believe he told reported that he had asked Stuart Sagenor for examples of the kinds of grants that have been made to snowmobile clubs. And the answer was, I can't think of any grants that have been made to snowmobile clubs. Oh. So, so we we might have a question for him, but I believe that question has already been asked. Well, I, well, I know that one was asked, but I don't think. I think he was looking for examples. We have an example here. We yeah, don't, I mean, we don't think it's eligible. I see. Yeah, I can always I ask to see what he has. Yeah, what he says. Yeah. And and I'm wondering whether it, if it is eligible. I'd be quite happy if it were eligible myself. Well, I was whether, whether we could get around or beyond the missed deadline, because they absolutely missed the deadline, by pointing out that they're proposing to do the work September to December next year. And if it were eligible, 
they could come back for our June deadline. One of the addendum to that part of that is they were saying that these are all going to be temporary and they'd be removed. If we approve it, would it have to be a permanent sign? I didn't know if that would be something as part of the, you know, qualification of it. It'd have to be like I don't a know. We could we could ask whether that makes a difference. I yeah, I didn't know a lot of landowners would not be happy with the signs there mm -hmm. in hay haying season, for instance. But. Anything else on projects? I think that was it. Oh, did we, um, Gillian was the church one, and we said that was, Alan was going to get the signatures or something for that, Judy, I think there was. Well, that's the next item on the agenda, yeah. I think. Okay. Um, it's the grant agreement, yeah. yeah. The grant agreement, and it, I believe we need to authorize Alan to sign it. Yes. Uh, um, Brian suggested a very strong <laughs> that we've, since we have be, uh, decided to put grant agreements in place for any grants to private entities, that we should authorize the chair to sign on our behalf, or we will all have, every one of us will have to sign every agreement, which is just. We do that every uh, time. Do we, I think, I think we, we are. Do we need all, to do it for each grant agreement, I was assume. You can do it for all grants. I think I think we want to do it for all grants. I okay. think I think we want. Why don't I make a motion? <laughs> so we can move on. Uh, um, I move that we authorize the chair of the Community Preservation Committee to sign any grant agreement with a grant recipient on behalf of the CPC. Sounds good. I'll Thank second you. that one. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We never approved the minutes, did we? Yes, we did. We did. We did. We did. Um, are there any further updates to the CPC plan? Catherine, you were. There's okay. been no housing meeting. They they okay. didn't plan on meeting until January. So I'm sorry if that wasn't clear enough last time, but no, I just, um, just yep. You yep. Said that, remember. Did you get anything from REC? I, I have no idea. No. No. Okay. And it's just an update we're looking for, right? If 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 updates exist. Well, I it would be nice if the commission committee commission looked at the priorities that are there, see if they still agree right. with them. Right. Endorse yeah. them. Um, yeah. Want to do something different? I mean, it, it's it's supposed to reflect current current beliefs, current priorities, and it's one way of ensuring that people are looking at it and thinking about it. Yep. But we need it. By the next meeting because we really need to approve the plan before we start voting on the projects and the next meeting is when and please tell me it's not in january yeah it will be in january second second wednesday in january okay Good i don't idea. think there's going to be a housing committee meeting still before that and i don't have to okay well i i we could okay. probably do it ahead yeah, of the, so on the projects said, in february right, right you said at the last meeting that we needed to have this plan approved before March. So I think that means it for January. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. February. Anything else? Well, we should. Oh, so the next meeting would be the second Wednesday in January? Right, which is when? The 11th. First, first is a Sunday. Thanks. Eleventh, I think. Yeah, yes. Yep. One, one, eleven, twenty-three. Well, happy holidays, and I hope everybody stays well. Oh yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Ditto. Okay. Thank you. Take care, everybody.
Good night. Good night. Good night.